What is going on, Phil Rooters? It's Joshua Thomas here on the Phil Rood Express, and it's time for a Final Fantasy tier list. I just recently finished playing Final Fantasy 2, and I've always wanted to do one of these tier lists, and I wanted to make sure that I played what was heavily regarded as one of the worst numbered Final Fantasies before I made this tier list, because I wanted to understand it. So, here we are. Uh, I, I definitely have to say that my, you know, this is going to be my opinion, uh, so you guys are welcome to disagree with me, and I am definitely going to, you know, explain my reasoning behind things. If I was to try and rate all these Final Fantasies based on, you know, when they came out, they would all either be like the greatest or the most amazing game for that time. And the reason I'm saying this is because I think I'm going to rate some of these higher than a lot of other people would. And so I wanted to make sure you understood that. I don't think that there's ever been a terrible numbered Final Fantasy game ever. And I, that's just me pl having just finished playing two. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, you'll see down here, I'm pointing with my finger like you guys can see it. I've got some did not play. I have not played Final Fantasy 3, 11, or 14. And I haven't played all the way through Final Fantasy 4. Um, and I do have to say that I, I got the 3D version of that one, the one that came out on like the Game Boy 3D Advanced or, or whatever, whichever it was called. And then I'll, I'll explain some other versions as well. So let's also get one thing straight here. I've got one game and one game only that's going to go in terrible. And that's frickin' Final Fantasy all the Braves. This was a mobile game where basically it was just like, how fast can you tap the screen? That's it. It's a horrible game. I, I hope it's no longer playable because it doesn't deserve to be played. It is just the worst cash grab Final Fantasy Square Enix has ever come out with. So for those of you who are wondering, that is what I consider to be a terrible game. So now on to Final Fantasy 1. Final Fantasy 1 is going to go, even though it's the first one, the one that started it all, it's going in average. And the reason I'm saying this is because, you know, compared to everything else, it was the original. It was the one, you know, we wouldn't have Final Fantasy 16 if it wasn't for Final Fantasy 1 and everything in between. But this game absolutely shows that it was the first of its kind in that it is lacking in a lot of storytelling elements that will show up in later Final Fantasies. It also doesn't have some of the hallmarks um, that other Final Fantasies uh, come to have and that we come to know as being part of a Final Fantasy game. So nevertheless, it's enjoyable, the combat system is good, and you know, when I played it first, I, I was still amazed. I played it when I was six years old to begin with. And I understand why it got the hype that it did and why it was able to start this beautiful franchise. So now on to Final Fantasy II. This is one where I think people would think that I'm going to put it in bad. But I'm also putting it in average. And here's why. I went into this expecting for it to, yes, be one of the worst ones I ever played, but I also recognized it as being one of the first for a lot of firsts. This was the first Final Fantasy that had named characters who actually had some form of development in a game. It wasn't heavy development, but it was there. This was also the first Final Fantasy that had a Sid. The Sid was a, an airship captain or an airship pilot, first of his kind, the first chocobo. It was, it did such a good job on so many levels. And then there's the combat system and the, the level up system, so to speak. Honestly, combat was, was fine. It had the same flaws that many other Final Fantasies have and that it's like, Oh, should I cast this death spell, which might never work, or should I go ahead and cast this fire spell, which is guaranteed to do damage? Of course I'm going to cast fire, and I definitely grinded. You can see my playthrough of it on the Felred Express. I tried to grind some of those status element 
uh, magic spells, but it just it just wasn't great. And then it, I definitely would say that uh, just regular attacks. Regular attacks become OP much faster than magic spells do, and that's my own. That's one of my biggest issues with it. And then also the fact that when you get a new spell, it's just like level one, and it's so freaking weak, and you have to grind and grind and grind if you want to level it up, which isn't bad for the three characters you have throughout the entire game. But then you get freaking Leon at the end of it, stupid Leon, and he still starts out with no spells. So that's that's my qualm with that. I'm going to get off my soapbox on that, and we're going to continue on with the next numbered game that I have played all the way through, and that's Final Fantasy V. Oh, this is tough. It's been a long time since I played Final Fantasy V, and I have really good memories of it. It's either going in good or amazing. I'm going to put it in good for now. It's clearly an improvement upon many, many things. Uh, once again, I haven't played Final Fantasy III, so this was, for me, the earliest uh, job class system Final Fantasy that I've played. And it did a good job with it. Its, it's characters and its storyline felt a little dragged out, especially when we get to Final Fantasy VI. Uh, and it's also important to note that I played several other Final Fantasies before this one, like seven. Uh, I, I may have played eight, I played Tactics, and I played six as well. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it in good for now. Um, once again, love the job class system. Uh, the story and characters are a little, you know, on the average side. But now we get to Final Fantasy VI, and this absolutely goes into one of the greatest of all times. Uh, I think I'm in the same vein as a lot of people in that it's absolutely incredible to see what Square Enix was able to do, or Squaresoft at the time, was able to do with this, you know, 2D art style and still what would be considered like the classic combat system. I mean, there were no vo there was no voice acting, and yet there was an opera in here. There was so many characters to choose from. Each of these characters had good storylines. The combat system was entertaining. Uh, each of the characters felt different in combat, and it made them feel unique and important and, and just fun to play as. And then, just the way the story was told, like compared to like Final Fantasy 2, like Final Fantasy 2 was short. Final Fantasy 6, I know why they haven't remade Final Fantasy 6. It's because it would they would have to make it a trilogy like Final Fantasy 7 that they're doing right now. So that's that's how I feel about Final Fantasy 6. It is the greatest of the 2Ds and is absolutely an incredible story and holds up today. All all accounts amazing game. Now into Final Fantasy VII, if you guys watch my channel, you know that this is hands down one of the greatest. In fact, I'm going to put it ahead, let me put you ahead, there we go, of Final Fantasy VI. It has its flaws, absolutely, but damn, the storyline and the materia system just put it over the top. It is just an incredible game, and Final Fantasy VII, even though I did play Final Fantasy I first, Final Fantasy VII is the game, the game, that made me want a PlayStation. It's the reason I had a PlayStation. It's the reason I have a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 5. It's because of this game right here, and I don't regret it one bit. It is what made me a Final Fantasy fan, even though it wasn't the first one I played. On to Final Fantasy VIII. Final Fantasy VIII would either go in good or amazing. It, and here's the problem with, with this one as well. I'm having to remember back a long, long time ago because it's been a long time since I played this one as well. I prob last time I probably played it was maybe on my PS2. Maybe. But for now, just because I have less information on it, I'm going to put it in good. It's going to go above Final Fantasy V. Um, once again, this, you know, improved in so many ways upon Final Fantasy VII. I personally had no problem with the junction system. I enjoyed it. Um, and of course, I'm not one of those people who 
tried to figure out the meta and figure out how to be OP early on in the game, so it continued to be fun throughout the game. The story was really good as well. It had its flaws, it had its jankiness, um, and you know, anytime you deal with wibbly wobbly timey wimey, you have this possibility that that can happen. But nevertheless, man, I still loved Final Fantasy VIII, and I, I might change it, I might move it up to amazing here later in the tier list. Um, Final Fantasy IX, absolutely an amazing game. Final Fantasy IX was definitely the epitome of the PlayStation 1 era, and I recently watched someone else's, like, abridged version of their playthrough, and it reminded me so much of why it was such an amazing game. It absolutely pushed the PlayStation 1 to its graphical limits. This one, I believe, was also on three discs. It was either three or four discs. I know seven was on three, eight was on four, and I want to say nine was either three or four. I can't remember. But the the storyline was awesome. They went back to the sort of classic chibi style characters, which is something that I wished back then that they hadn't done. But once again, as I played it, I still fell in love with it. And we're being reminded of all those story elements just reminded me of what an amazing game this was. And like, you know, I teared up at the end. I teared up at the end. That was, that was, uh, you know, learning about VV and Zidane and Garnet's histories. That was just so good. VV is such a great character. Most, most famous black mage in Final Fantasy history. So, can't say enough good things about it. Final Fantasy X, I, this one I teeter between um, greatest and amazing, I'm going to put it in the, the amazing category. It is a freaking phenomenal game. It, it's, it's interesting to see that a lot of people make comparisons to this game when talking about linear games, because this one is a very linear game as well, but they just did a good job on this linear game. and. One of the things that they did a great job on was that they broke up the linearity with other types of content. There was a little bit of exploration here, a dungeon here and there. There were also little games that you could play. I think that was one important thing, um, was that when it came to linearity, you had to break it up with little things to occupy yourself with, and some mini games in this game were absolutely fantastic. I loved playing Blitzball. I'd started the team and I definitely like was trying to play them and get good characters in there and and get them to the top. And it was also the first one of voice acting. Uh, there's a lot of hit on, you know, a lot of people who say that the voice acting wasn't that great in it. And while it isn't to the level that it is today, it was still really good voice acting for a time when voice acting was just becoming a thing in video games uh, to the extent that they did in 10. So, Final Fantasy X, an amazing game. I can't decide whether I would put 9 uh, behind or ahead of it, so I'm going to leave it as is. I'm just going to say that these two are like a tie for me. Uh, Final Fantasy XII. Oh, once again, I don't think any of the numbered Final Fantasies are bad. Yeah. I'm gonna put this in average. It's so tough. It was good. Like, it was good. The combat system was very nice, and I should say, this is another one of those important things I need to say. Um, I played the original version of this, and I have not played the updated one, I believe it's the Zodiac Age, where they fixed a few issues that were in this system. The original one, by the time you got to the end of the game, you had unlocked so many of the different squares uh, in the upgrade system that every character was practically the same. Every character was practically the same. There was like no difference between them. Um, another caveat I should say is that Final Fantasy II, I played the pixel remaster of it, so that could have affected me a little bit as to why you know I'm giving it the average instead of the bad. Nevertheless, um, one of the things that I didn't like about 12 and I couldn't put my nose on it at the time, but I kept waiting for something more to come with Vaughn and Pinello, Pinello, and they were just, they were so vanilla. 
like it, yeah, a lot of people will argue with that, but uh, they were vanilla compared to all these other Final Fantasy games where the main characters had such an important aspect in the game. These two characters felt like they were just along for the ride most of the time. I kept waiting for some kind of relationship to start building with Ash and possibly Vaughn, but at the same time I was just like, I, I almost don't care. And then by the time I got to the end of it, when I was in the final dungeon, I didn't think I was in the final dungeon. I was like, oh, okay, I just need to get past this, and then the final dungeon will appear. And then the credits rolled. You know, the, the final scenes happened and the credits rolled, and I was just like, oh, well, we're there. Now, I get that this was a, a highly political drama, and I, and I understood that. I, I got it. I got the politics of it. But those main characters, I mean, Balthier, Ash, Bosch, Fran, those were the main characters. And that's, that's where I'll leave it at that. Uh, so yeah, once again, didn't play uh, 11. Gonna go to 13 here. This is another tough one for me, because it did a lot of things right. And it did several things wrong. I can't decide whether I'd put it ahead of or behind Final Fantasy XII. I'm going to put it right here for now. 13, number one, was graphically incredible. It was beautiful to look at. The story needed work, absolutely. The character development, I think, was one thing that they really worked on. In this, they made this a character development story as opposed to this story of this, you know, like group of people who have to come together to overcome this greater evil. It was more like this group of individuals who were constantly arguing with each other and trying to figure themselves out. But then put on top of that, this attempt at this action ATB combat system and it definitely fell short. They definitely did some things that I enjoyed, like making status of elements and status element spells more viable, and I hope that they can re-implement that kind of thing in later implementations of Final Fantasy. But then I just remember the first two hours of the game being this absolute slog, like, okay, I get it, this is how the combat system works, my god, give me something else to do. And then also having to read like an hour's worth of compendiums just to understand what the story was about in the first two hours. That was, that was kind of bad. I've played the first few hours of Final Fantasy Type-0, and Type-0 takes place in the same kind of world as 13, and I was able to understand Type-0 right from the beginning. They didn't bombard me with all these strange terms and they gave me to they gave me the information in a steady stream they made the combat interesting right from the beginning and it was just such a better intro even though i haven't finished it that's another one of those ones that i need to finish type zero but yeah so 13 is going to be there 14 once again haven't played it. I probably never will, even though I've heard absolutely amazing things about A Realm Reborn and all the expansions that they have come out with. So now we're going to move on to 15. 15. Either goes in good or amazing. I'm going to put it in good for right now. I thoroughly enjoyed 15. I definitely saw the steps that had been taken from 13 to 15. And I could also see, I played 15 after having played Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I could absolutely see the beginnings in Final Fantasy XV of what they kind of perfected in Remake. So uh, just like the dialogue system, how you could run through a town and hear people talking without having to go up to them and press X, I loved that. I do understand, I also played uh, the the royal edition of this which makes me i think like this a bit more i would almost 
almost put it in amazing uh, because it was really close so I was able to play as the different characters in the party and I think that was an important thing this is also barring the expansions uh, so I'm not counting the expansions as a part of the Royal Edition when I put it in good if all those expansions had been a part of the original game it would absolutely be up here in amazing uh, but no it's still good the storyline, I definitely enjoyed it. The combat system did kind of get stale in areas. And then there were some uh, issues, as far as I was concerned, with the main villain. He was what I would call ambiguous. He was too vague uh, for too much of the game. And then we literally, towards the end of the game, get on this bullet train, just, just barreling towards the end giving us all this exposition, telling us exactly what was going on. And it's it's something that we needed a little bit earlier on in the game. So once again, I just, I'm so close to putting it in amazing, but I'm going to put it in good. Let's see, Final Fantasy 16. This is another one of those games where I teeter back and forth right here. Right now, I'm going to put it in Amazing. This was the first rated R mainline Final Fantasy, and I, I loved what they did with the R rating, the things that they added to it, the things that we have only ever sort of seen with kids' gloves on in other Final Fantasies. I mean, yeah, there's absolutely sexual innuendos and, and you know, hints at sexual acts and other things in other Final Fantasies, and there are absolutely mature themes in other Final Fantasies. It's just that they had to be portrayed in a teen-rated way. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 took the kids' gloves off and did an, an, an amazing job with it. The combat system was solid, and if you watch my review of it, it was solid, but it was missing some things from that literally exist in almost every other Final Fantasy game that would have put that combat system on the god tier level for me. But it ended up just being a reflex system where you waited for abilities to charge and then you used those abilities and then you did the reflex thing again. So there was that issue and then there was the issue of really bad side quests which led to some poor pacing in the game. That's all I'll say on that one. Voice acting phenomenal, main story phenomenal, the world building was also phenomenal with the exception of the side quests, uh, and then the end game side quests actually did what I wish the other side quests would have done. They were good, but because of those really bad side quests earlier on, I didn't complete all of the amazing ones at the end of the game. So that's where I am on that one, so it's at the end of the Amazing list. Now we're going to move on to uh, some of the sequels and offshoots. I'm going to start with... Actually, I'm going to start with Final Fantasy Tactics. Tactics is the greatest. Uh, I know that they came out with uh, Tactics 2 and Tactics 3. I never played those, so I don't know if they were able to improve upon this system or not. I would almost put this in amazing because I'm sure that there I know there were improvements that they could have made upon it and there were absolutely some flaws in the original tactics game that needed work and I wouldn't say that those really got fixed in what is it the zodiac age I'm making I might be getting that confused with uh, Final Fantasy 12 but uh, either way the the sequel not the sequel the remaster of this one, that you could play on the PSP and some other things it was just really a remaster. It didn't really fix anything as far as I was concerned. But nevertheless, it is an incredible tactics game, and I I can't speak highly enough of the system that they created way back then. I have yet to play another tactics game where I felt that it reached this level. So if you guys know of one, a modern day one that is as good or greater than Final Fantasy Tactics combat system, let me know because I would love to play it when I have a free time. The next one I'll talk about is Crisis Core. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Crisis Core Reunion here. 
it's really tough for me to want to put Crisis Core Reunion in the Amazing category because it absolutely improves upon uh, the original, which would definitely have ended up in good or average for me. I'm going to put it up here for now because they did a great job on it. They, you know, redid a few things on the combat system that really needed reworking. It worked on the PSP, and it had to be that way because of the PSP, but since they were able to put it on other consoles, my goodness, it's so much smoother. So much smoother, and then adding in uh, the Buster Sword growth element was a lot of fun. Uh, the 200 or 100... 99 side quests that are in there or missions um, they're still kind of meh for me uh, the story overall is is hit or miss for me you know of the last half of the game and I think a lot of people feel the same way is the best half of it and then you know they retroactively do some things in this game that I don't agree with but nevertheless I will put reunion up here in the amazing category but at the very end it's one of those ones where I would almost say that, uh, you know, it would have to go down here, but we'll put it up here for now. Final Fantasy VII R, absolutely an amazing game. And now that I see this, now that I put this here, I'm absolutely moving this down to good. Because VII R is on a different level than Crisis Core, and I can't put them on the same level. Here's, here's what makes me know that remake is such a good game and it is that it made me appreciate the character of Tifa more uh, than the OG did. I, I definitely liked Tifa as a character throughout the entire game but during the Midgar portion I would say she didn't get quite enough character development in the OG and they really flesh her out in Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Uh, not only that but they just do an incredible job with the voice acting, the music, and all of the other characters' dialogue as well in the remake, and, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm on board with the remake series. Can't wait to play Rebirth coming out here soon. And yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about it, but amazing game. Not the greatest, but definitely amazing. I can imagine putting Rebirth up here in, in a future tier list. Um, Final Fantasy... Uh, we'll go with Dirge of Cerberus. I... I gotta put it here. I gotta put it in the bad category. Um, it has... It, it's, I almost want to give it average because it's not a horrible game. It's not terrible. It's not, it's not all the Braves. But it wasn't great. It could have used some work on the dialogue. It had some really campy stuff in it. Uh, its attempt at being a third-person shooter was okay for Square Enix. I mean, for Square Enix... It, it at least played. It played well, they had the good visuals in it, but it just, it was just bad. So uh, I won't defend it any more than that. Final Fantasy X-2. I am going to put it actually up here in the good category. Final Fantasy X-2, uh, I think, gets a lot of heat, but it was a freaking good game. In fact, I'm going to put it at least above 8 and 5. The the Dress Sphere system was a fun system to play, and it was, while it wasn't as good as Final Fantasy X, definitely not in terms of story and in terms of world building and that kind of thing. X2 did a good job, and I think it's one of those things where people saw it, they saw that what they did with the character of Yuna, and they just wanted to hate it. In actuality, it's pretty good sequel for 10, and it's fun as hell to play. So, if you're one of those people who was like, oh, I've heard that it was bad, so that's why I didn't play it, you need to give it a fair shot and and see how it goes for yourself. The, the Dress Sphere combat system was a really well thought out system, and it really made you think when creating your sphere grids. So, yeah. It's a good game, and nothing could make me change my mind on that. And then, Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII. I never played XIII 2, but I did play this one. This one also goes in the good category, and as far as I was concerned, it was better than XIII. Uh, this 
was honestly an unsung hero in terms of action RPGs. Lightning Returns was honestly the first action RPG that was really good that was made by um, Square Enix. It was, I would say, honestly better than 15s. Dang. I gotta, I'm gonna put it above 15 just for the combat system, but if we were talking storyline, I would, I would be putting 15 above it. Nevertheless, it had an absolutely rewarding combat system. Um, the different builds that you could make for lightning were incredible. The, the end of the world scenario was absolutely fun to investigate. Uh, it had a darker tone to it. And this, this 500 year gap, uh, for those of you who don't know, Lightning Returns takes place 500 years after Final Fantasy 13 2 or 13. And time has been frozen, or I should say that people have stopped aging this entire 500 years. And so children who were five years old stayed five years old for 500 years. People who were elderly stayed elderly for 500 years. Now, you weren't invincible, you still died, but nevertheless, um, I think Final Fantasy Lightning Returns is uh, definitely one of those unsung heroes. So this is my tier list. Um, let me know what you guys think, let me know what kind of changes you would make in this tier list. These are all the ones, once again, that I played and the numbered ones that I haven't played. Uh, any Anyone on this list that you're thinking of, like um, Stranger of Paradise or Type Zero, are games that I started playing but have not finished as of this date. So let me know what you guys think, and I hope you enjoyed this, and check out more Final Fantasy content on the Fellroad Express. Check you guys next time.